Hey Dan, I loved your last video. Now, I'm embarrassed to admit that I knew precisely none of that before going into it, which is kind of sad considering, you know, that's my religion. Uh, I'm going to start with a story back from when I was little. As a young student, I used to have these moments where the teacher would explain a new concept or idea that most of the students had never thought of. I would always get smug and self-important because I had had the same idea on my own years before. Back then, I used to think that if I had had these thoughts on my own, then I must be as brilliant as the men and women who were first credited with these ideas. If I'm being honest, I was an arrogant little bastard. But as I got older, and I learned more history, and I learned more philosophy, this notion failed me. I realized that, in all truth, I had never actually had an original idea in my entire life. Every great insight and idea that I had ever had had been thought of by somebody tens, hundreds, even thousands of years before I was even born. At first I found this really depressing, but as I grew, I learned even more. In reality, this is a really great thing. I had always loved science and the way it discovers truth, and I began to realize that the way we think about things, the way we develop philosophy, the way we develop morals, and all of these things develop much the same way that science does. In science, new ideas emerge all the time, but in order for them to be considered plausible, they have to correlate with ideas that were discovered in the past. Or at the very least, they have to account for them. Once a scientific discovery is accounted for the past, from here, scientific innovations can be new, novel, and true. These get held onto. Or, as is often the case, the discovery could turn out to be new, novel, but false. These get fixed, modified, or rejected. Science is, or should, never be about being original. It's not about being novel. It's about being right. As I grew older, I realized the same thing was true about philosophy. The same thing was true about any form of thinking. New ideas should be built on the backs of the intellectuals that came before us. Like it or not, man is not any smarter today than he was thousands of years ago. It would be irresponsible of us not to build upon them. Or perhaps our new ideas are contrary to the ideas of the past. In this case, we can reject what came before us, but we have to do so deliberately and knowingly. If in your new perspective you're about to throw away or discard all of the knowledge, beliefs, and thoughts that came before you, you better have a good reason to do so. Because it's not about being novel. Being novel doesn't make you right. And being unique does not make an idea noble. We are indebted to the thinkers that came before us. And the ideas of theirs that had merit last. Ideas without merit may sound great, and they may flourish for a time. But if they lack honest historical perspective and intellectual insight, eventually they will wither. In this respect, I think almost everything from morals to philosophy to theology to economics operates under this idea of survival of the fittest. The strongest ideas live, the weakest ideas die. And that is why I come across as morally old-fashioned. One reason, and not the only one, but one reason why I have the morals and beliefs that I do is because they have intellectually survived. For centuries, intellectual giants have been molding them and sculpting them and building upon them, all while other intellectual giants of equal mental merit have been attacking them and tearing at them and trying to break them down. Which, I should say, is a good thing. Any idea worth its merit should be attacked and beat upon to make sure it's got strength. Yet, no sizable crack has ever been found in them. People have often thought that they have found a crack, but they don't last. Ideas with sizable flaws in them wither and die, but the ideas that I try to ascribe to always remain. They're doggedly persistent. I find many of today's morals to be flawed, but that's not because I don't like the people who hold them, and that's not because I don't have respect for them, and it's not even because I don't find the morals of today appealing. I mean, quite the contrary. I find many of them very appealing, and I understand where most of them come from. I would never judge anybody for holding them, but the reason I don't subscribe to many of them is because I don't find that they have the same intellectual rigor that some of the ideas from the past have, some of the morals that I have seen formed and shaped throughout history. Not just that, many of the morals we hold today, while they may seem novel and new, they aren't. They've been around before. Many of the mores that I reject today I do so knowing that they have arisen in the past, but they didn't last. I should point out, I will inevitably be wrong about some of these things. I would rather be wrong for a well-informed reason than be right about something and have no idea why. Conversely, I have much more respect for somebody who disagrees with me on intellectual grounds than I do for someone who agrees with me entirely, but they don't know why. I guess my point is that we shouldn't be afraid to build our own thoughts, ideas, and morals 
upon those that came before us. By taking what came before us and improving upon it, sculpting it and refining it, that makes our ideas better. It makes us better. And if I disagree with you, you being anyone, know that it's not personal. I think we need to stop being like the politicians today and start assuming the best out of people, especially the people we disagree with. I might have the naive impression that most people want what's best for humanity. So if we disagree about these things, Let's talk about it. Let's not be the arrogant bastard that I was back in middle school. Alright, for your challenge, I want you to write a parody of something. It can be anything, any genre. I want you to break the fourth wall at least once. And should be at least two pages. Love you, Dan.